Hey everybody, welcome back to The Stuff of Legend. My name is D'Lo and I have a movie review for you guys. And don't worry, it is spoiler free. I'm going to be talking about the recently in theaters Shazam movie. And man, I've got a lot to say about this, but I will keep it to my feelings. I'll stay off of details because I know that some people, a lot of people, have not yet seen the film. I want to make sure you guys have a great movie going experience. So... With that out of the way, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the confusing about Shazam, all right? So first up, I just wanted to let you guys know um, that I had a absolute blast at Shazam. I, I think, honestly, it was one of the most enjoyable movies I've gone to see uh, in recent years. Now, I said a very similar thing about Aquaman. I really, really liked Aquaman. It was so great, so fun. It was funny at times. It had a good balance between um, intense action and uh, comedy, and it had a really good um, story of like of love and of loss. And there was just a lot of good that was happening in that movie. Now with Shazam, it's a very, very different kind of movie. Um, it is true and true a comedy. It is all the way through, one hundred percent. It's comedy, but there is. A surprising amount of intensity as well so there's no doubt that this film belongs in the comedy genre but there is an intense story that ensues within the movie and I believe I understand the reason for it I can't get into that because that falls into spoiler territory but um, I wanted to just go off the list all right so first thing on the good is that the beginning um, it defied the rumors that I had heard a lot uh, online in the online spheres of like movie pundits and uh, film fans and uh, Marvel DC fans a lot of people who had seen it before said that the beginning was really slow and you might find this to be the case but me being a, a comic book fan I understood not only that they were setting up the origin of uh, for instance the hero they because this is the first Shazam movie that we've ever we've ever gotten there was a Shazam TV show back in the day, but this is the very first Shazam movie. And so for Zach Levi, um, it's it's really important that you understand where the character comes from, where their power is drawn from, uh, and just the whole, the whole premise of the story needs to be set up because people don't know it like they know Spider-Man, for instance. You can't just jump into Shazam and skip the origin. You have to tell people who he is, where he comes from, what his powers are. You have to go through that process. Um, and so, and once you've had four, five, six, uh, you know, Shazam movies, you don't, you no longer have to go over his origin whatsoever. Even if it's rebooted, rebooted, rebooted. I think once that comes time, I think people will understand the character a lot more than they do now. So the beginning didn't feel slow to me. It felt not only necessary, but it was very compelling. So it starts the movie out and it does not in any way feel like a comedy until it gets past the initial setup. And it was critical for the movie to have that type of a setup because a lot of people need that kind of um, assurance. Once you see the film, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But I felt like the beginning did a fantastic job. It was a triple threat setup. It was setting up the hero, it was setting up the villain, and it's setting up a film to come without you knowing that it's doing that either. It's really good. And then uh, there, it, it ties in with a lot that is kind of sprinkled throughout the film. Um, I can't get into details because this is a non-spoiler review, but I really appreciated the, the, the beginning um, third of the movie. I was really, really glad that they did it the way they did. Now, let me, uh, and when I say the beginning third, I'm including the beginning along with the beginning third. The beginning of the movie I was referencing was about 10 minutes. So uh, first 10 minutes, you might consider a little bit slow, but I assure you the payoff is great. Um, so anyway, number two on the good is the villain was a slightly different version of the comic book version of that, of that villain, Dr. Savannah, which they show in all the trailers. Um, but they were still able to make the difference make sense. So the the villain in the comics, I'm not going to get into details because they're going to tell you about it in the movie. I don't want to ruin too much. But he has a certain path that he, he takes to become who he is in the comics. And in the movie, you see a, dra a, a very different version of that character, the the. The individual is basically the same, but how they use him in the film is very, very different. 
And so um, it was odd to see him that way until you understand why he is the way he is. And again, the beginning 10 minutes of the film really do a good job of setting up not only the plot of this film, not only the origin of Shazam, not only the origin of the villain, but also you start to, at, by the end of the film, you're realizing that that beginning 10 minutes of the film is setting up much more than just that. And it's actually quite a masterpiece um, that they're able to get that much information in uh, in just 10 minutes. So I, I was really impressed, um, especially, specifically by the part of the film that most people were um, per, per, perhaps bored with. I think that was probably um, what you'll hear the consensus was from film pundits. But my wife, my friends, the people that I went with to see it, we all loved it. And so um, next uh, on the list, the marketing really impressed me. So number three on the list was the marketing. So once I was in the movie, once I was watching the film and we were like halfway, two thirds of the film through, I was realizing, oh my gosh, I, I was digging through, combing through every single trailer. You guys know, following me here on the channel, I covered so many of the trailers, the special looks, all that. And my goodness, I I did not see this story coming. Like there was, there was so much that they were able to tell us in the trailers, but all of that did not reveal the plot of the movie. All of it did not, not there was there was things that make you think, like further down the road, like an Easter egg, or maybe it's just hinting at something for the future. And you're wow, man. Like I, like it, it was almost Disney level secrecy. You know what I mean? It was really good. And so, um, I, I was impressed by that. Nothing was ruined by the trailers. It was just fantastic. And not even all the best jokes were in the, in the, the trailers. A lot of the best jokes that were in the movie were just scattered throughout in random places by characters you hadn't even really gotten to hear talk in the trailers. It was really good. Um, uh, number four is kind of just like a side note. It's just all the way through. It's just laughs, 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 laughs. Story, story is great. Action was awesome. Uh, it was just fun. It was all the way through, it was enjoyable, it was fun, it's rewatchable, I can't wait to see it again. I'm gonna buy it on Blu-ray, I'm gonna watch it with my family for years and years and years to come. It's gonna be amazing, and I, I want everybody to see this film, it's so good. Um, next, it leaned, um, it leaned impressively heavy into the comedy, and, um, and also a very, very serious tone at times. So it had, um, it had lots of um, like jokes and laughs and situational humor and uh, like lots of in your face kind of humor. It was just, it was great. But then there was also moments that felt in as intense as many of the intense moments in Lord of the Rings. Like it felt really, really dark at times, which placed it, I think, outside of like, I mean, the whole movie's in, in a comedy, right? So you'll get all the, all the, negativity from the DC exclusive fanboys saying like, oh, they copied Marvel or oh, it's it's like a Marvel movie or whatever, which is like is a, a ludicrous argument in my opinion, but um, just because it's good or just because it's fun or funny or enjoyable to watch doesn't make it a Marvel movie. It's, it's kind of crazy, um, but it's ironic because uh, he was Captain Marvel <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, he's not anymore, of course. So, uh, but anyway, I, I really thought it was it was a uh, an impressive feat by the director. Uh, I think what was his name, David Sandberg or something. I forget. Whatever. I'll, I'll remember it later. But um, he uh, he balanced a, a true feel of comedy all the way through the movie, and then added these blocks of just really intense moments throughout the film. Um, and then and then littered it back with with comedy and it was a really really great balance between like it would it would be like laughs 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 and then it would have like a moment of intensity or um, action or even drama there was a moment that almost made me cry and I was really I, I was like I was really um, compelled by what I saw on on screen and I didn't expect that from Shazam I didn't expect that at all but it went really really well it wasn't it wasn't predictable. There was a couple of plot twists that um, really surprised me, surprised my wife, surprised uh, my friends. And uh, 
it was it was just all together just really fun. It's a great movie to watch. It's I would recommend go see it in the theaters because it's it's big, it's booming, it's loud, it's fun, and um, yeah, I think seeing it that that big on a big screen with like you know if you can with Bose or Adobe or uh, Dolby Sound or whatever you can get the the best quality you can get go see it because it's a fun experience. Um, next, I was I was shocked that literally the entire cast was spectacular. Like um, the adults. The kids, um, the villains, the side, the supporting cast, like everybody in this movie did a great job. Um, I was expecting it to be like a little more like like maybe cheesy acting or just no, like it was good. It was really good. And I even even characters in the trailer that I thought were going to be like, eh, like like just boring or in the way or whatever. No, like I was I was surprised at how much I liked those characters throughout the movie or how much I felt for those characters throughout the movie. It was, it was awesome. It was so good. Now, um, lastly, the, the movie gave me hope and confidence even for the future of the DCEU. The future of the DCEU is strong. My friends, Aquaman was a, a step in a wonderful direction. So wonder woman was a step in a great direction. Um, uh, Aquaman was great. Um, and this is even better. Shazam is, it's showing that they understand the characters because Shazam and Aquaman are not the same. They're both really good movies. Aquaman created a new feel for itself out of what was the original intention of the tone for Aquaman and how the culture perceives the character. They smashed those things together and gave us Aquaman, which was wildly enjoyable, um, serious where it needed to be, and really funny. And it was just great. It was a great movie. It felt very fantasy. Now, uh, this movie, Shazam, didn't feel like a fantasy. It felt like it felt like a comedy, and it felt like um, a movie about family. And it was it was very much um, a uh, a sweet, connectable, relatable movie. And even if you yourself aren't like Billy Batson, Foster Kid, or any of that, you can really connect with them because it's about something ubiquitous. Everyone understands the story of family. And that was the principle behind Shazam. It's it's so good. It's so great. So I'm really, really excited for what DC has coming. Now, that being said... We're going to move on to the bad. And I really only have two things to say as far as um, the bad. So first there's first thing to note is that there's two after credit scenes. One of them, is, the first one, uh, is important. Stick around for that. Um, and uh, that one, the, the, the first thing I wanted to say was the second after credit was um, disappointing. Uh, I was expecting more out of uh, out of an after credit from a franchise property like Shazam, um, and it did not. It didn't go anywhere really. It was kind of a a boring, kind of useless. It was funny a little bit, but it was it was kind of useless really. So if you if you are pressed for time, you're like, oh, I got the kids, you know, at the babysitter or whatever. We got to get out of here. Don't feel like you have to stick around for the second after credit. Stick around for the first one, and then after that, you're free to go. Because um, the second after credit was basically nothing, and I, I'll explain why in my spoiler review. Um, but the first one, definitely, definitely stay for that one. Very important. Um, and this, that, uh, oh, and the second thing before I move on, I'm gonna hold that, hold that thought in your head. But I'm gonna say my second thing for the bad, and then I'll move on to the confusing. So uh, the second thing is that. Like I mentioned earlier, the DC only fanboys are gonna whine and complain about the comedy in Shazam. They're gonna say it felt like a D it felt like a Marvel film or DC copied Marvel or like they're gonna they're gonna complain about it not being like dark and gritty because they're stuck in in an echo chamber of their Zack Snyder minds where it's like, oh, it's a DC film, so it has to be dark and brooding. No. Batman is supposed to be dark and brooding. In fact, that's one of the reasons why a lot of people didn't like Man of Steel was because it was dark and brooding and it was Superman. It contrasted with what Superman is in t is supposed to be. Now, 
I freaking love Man of Steel. And I think Zack Snyder did a great job with Man of Steel. However, um, they basically saw everyone's love and affinity for the Dark Knight trilogy and then said, we're going to make all DC films like that because people like it. And that's now, now people have gotten used to that, even though all of the Batman movies before that were corny, cheesy, jokes galore. Like every Superman film was, was bright and shiny and smiles. And like, I mean, except for like uh, the Brandon Routh one, that one was kind of a bummer, but, but there was like, you know, like almost every single DC film TV show that was live action. um, They weren't like that. That's a very new thing. So for people to say like DC is dark and Marvel is light and uh, DC is like gritty and Marvel is like cheesy, happy-go-lucky humor or DC is for adults and Marvel's for kids. That is a that is a binary way of thinking that is so like caveman. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's so like barbaric. It's like <laughs> knuckle-dragging apes are going to be like, like, oh, it's a Marvel film. It's like, it's not a Marvel. It's a great film that's within its context. Shazam has always been funny. Shazam is like the Spider-Man of DC. He's like, he's like the Spider-Man of DC before Jaime Reyes shows up, you know? So it's like, he was, he was a kid that is in the body of a, a demigod and then he is able to run around and be a superhero and play with his powers and learn like, but it's not just a, it's not just a toy. It's a tool for good. So like, I don't know. It's like, it's that barbaric. So like if you're, if you go and see this movie and you have a, a barbaric Zack Snyder worshiping mindset, then yeah, you might walk out and be like, it was like a Marvel film. If that's the case, I can't help you. But with, with this movie, it genuinely is great. It's fun to watch. It's actually entertaining. Um, and it fits the context of what the character and his stories are. They're fun. They're for, they're, they were written for children. They were written for kids as comics. And this one, though it is not for kids necessarily, it's probably for like teen and, and up. It's PG-13 clearly. And I won't explain why, but there is a lot. Like I mentioned earlier in The Good, there was a balance of like dark and like um, and uh, rough <laughs> stuff. Uh, definitely not for kids, but the spirit is very childlike and it awakens a childlike wonder within you. So that's fun. And that that's kind of tying back into The Good. But anyway, the bad here is that the, the second after credit scene um, is boring and you don't need it. And the, uh, the DC fanboys are going to whine and complain about it um and i love dc um but those complaints basically invalid they don't make any sense so there's really only the one and it's that the after credit sucks everything else is really good now that takes us to the third uh which is the confusing so unless you uh unless you read the comics right so like this was confusing for me Unless you read the Shazam comics, which I did not read a lot of. I read a lot of like Justice League collaboration ones um, where you have Shazam and the Justice or just Shazam and Superman. I didn't I didn't read a lot of the Shazam uh, comics specifically. I didn't read any of like the New 52. Um, and I know I should. Comic Man Jake is going to be really upset with me for saying that. But um, if you don't know a great deal about the characters... Um, and the stories that tie in with his background, then the first after credit will leave you very confused. You will be very confused. Um, but once you, if you bring like a, a nerd with you that knows the comics and you bring like your, your geekiest friend, and he totally knows everything about Shazam. Then when you see that, you can just turn your head and say, Hey, what, what was that all about? You know? And then he'll, he'll tell you what's coming. And then you'll be able to like freak out with him or whatever, because there's a lot that it promises. This this is not the end of Shazam that we're seeing here. I can tell you that, and um, it's you know that's not even that's not even a spoiler here, but it is awesome. So stay for the first after credit. The second one kind of sucks, um, but the confusing thing there is that you need to do the research afterward. So. Um, afterward, after you see the film, just look it up, look up the after credit. Uh, there's no shame in that, or just come over here cause in the spoiler discussion, I'll be talking about that a little bit more. That way we can get into, um, some of the details about what it is that I saw that you saw that you will see in Shazam, um, in the after credit and what that means ongoing 
okay? So there's a lot there. It was very confusing, but once you do the research, it's not that confusing. It's really easy because the, again, it ties back to the beginning of the movie. It talk, it ties back to the very beginning. And that's why after seeing the first after credit, I was incredibly impressed by, by DC and have the forethought they had to not only set up um, this movie and the hero and the villain, but they set up something else. And so it's like, it, it was just perfect. It was beautiful the way that they did that. It was a masterful intro to a grand, great movie and possibly the most watchable and enjoyable film in the DC EU, possibly one of the most rewatchable films I'll expect um, out of all DC films ever because it's so much fun. It's so fun. That's all for my spoiler free review. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much. Let me know down in the comments what you guys uh, think about Shazam or feel about Shazam. Please no spoilers. Keep the spoilers off for this one. I'll make another video doing a spoiler review so that we can talk in spoiler detail in the comments about that movie and what we thought about it. So for now, just keep it to feelings. Um, no details, please be courteous to your other fellow film fans and DC Marvel fans and, and everyone who's going to go see this. Um, so anyways, thank you guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up by clicking the thumbs up button. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn on notifications so you can be alerted right away when I go live next time. That way you guys won't miss a thing. Anyways, uh, thanks again and stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.